today's video is not one of the most unique you'll find on YouTube, but one I was excited to make anyway. Of course, that's what's in my camera bag for 2024. So I'm packing for my very first trip of the year and it's been a couple of years since I've made one of these videos. My gear has totally changed since then, but more importantly, it's shrunk down a whole lot. Now managing to fit everything I need in a much smaller bag as well, I'm just using a 20 liter. So all the gear in this bag is everything I need to be able to take photos, make videos, keep my business and this channel alive while I'm on the move. So let's unpack this thing and jump in. So I now have everything unpacked here ready to go. Essentially, I'm gonna repack it, show you where everything fits in and some of the neat features of this bag as well. Now, I am a lot more considerate about what I carry now. Found out over the years, the more comfortable I am both physically, but also mentally. It's a lot less taxing when you're not carrying as much gear. You don't have to make as many decisions on what you should be using. Overall, it just makes for a lot better experience. So. All these items are really intentional. Let's start packing them. Of course, starting with the bag, which is the Peak Design 20 liter everyday zip. Of course, in black. I am lucky on this channel, I get to test out a number of different camera bags. Although I do get sent a lot of these, including this one to try out. So disclaimer there, ultimately brands have no say in which one I continue to use. So 20 liters is the perfect size for me at the moment. It's small enough that keeps my setup relatively minimal, but still enough space to carry everything I need. Starting with the outside, let's pop my tripod in. I'm currently using the Ulanzi F38 travel tripod and this fits nicely down the side of the bag. We also have straps on both sides to secure any items like your tripod. You can check out my video on this if you're interested, but basically a cheaper alternative to the Peak Design tripod. Although I do use a tripod less and less these days, I always take it away traveling with me. Some days I will leave it back at the accommodation though. All right, onto the camera, which of course is the Canon R5. So I've been using this ever since it first came out. I've tried pretty much every camera in Canon's lineup now, and this is still my go-to. And I've also got this strap, which is from Etsy. It's designed to fit with Peak Design anchors, so I can quickly take it on and off, which I really like as well. So I usually carry three spare batteries with me. I've opened up the side here, and I like to keep them in this pocket here because I like to have quick and easy access to them. So they fit nicely down here, put those in. The other thing I like to keep here is a spare SD card. This basically lives in the bag. I never take it out. So for those occasions where I forget to put one in my camera, there's always one in my bag, which has saved me a few times. On the opposite side in the same pocket, this is where I will usually keep my battery pack and a cable for quick access at the top here. So moving on to lenses, and I've opted for a pretty minimal three lens setup. The first one, my favorite one, of course, no surprises here, is the RF 50 millimeter F 1.2. This is the one lens where I've opted for quality over keeping my setup light, simply because I love this lens. If you know me or my channel, you know I get a lot of use out of this lens, providing unreal quality and so much freedom in low light conditions. See, it fits neatly in the middle of the bag there. All right, moving on to my wider option, which is honestly the hardest decision for me, but I've gone for the 24 millimeter prime. This is nice and small and it's a 1.8 lens. I really like 24 as a focal length and I've come to enjoy the limitation of mostly using prime lenses instead of zooms in most situations. So I'll sit this in this section at the top here. Now I do have the RF 15 to 35 as an option here as well but mostly I'll stick with the 24, just to keep that lightweight compact option there. Sometimes I may take this one instead or take both, but on this occasion, I'm gonna leave it behind. All right, moving on to my tele option and no surprises here, I'm going with the RF 70 to 200 F 2.8 lens, which slides in the bottom nicely. Again, this lens produces superb results. After taking a long time to pick this one up, I'm really glad I eventually did. If you wanna check it out, you can watch my review on it here. Especially for street photography, I find it's great to capture all my detailed shots. The main alternative here is obviously a good 85, but 
Although I think a 70 to 200 can make you slightly lazy in terms of street photography, I try to be mindful about how I use this lens, using it more like a prime lens where possible. So that's it in terms of lenses. If you watched my video last week, you'll definitely understand my thought process in choosing these lenses, but definitely go and check it out if you haven't already. So that largely makes up most of the bottom of the bag. I do have a little bit of room left in there if I wanted to squeeze in an extra lens. But the great thing about this bag is the many different access points and this zip that goes all the way around. So if I zip that back up and open up this top section, which is the same zip, it's also handy with these zips. You can undo this and run it through there, do it back up and you won't be able to open it quickly, just adding that extra layer of security. But opening this up, I'm gonna fold that all the way down so we can see in here. Remember, you also have quick access to that top pocket so I can easily grab my batteries from here now as well. And you can see my 24 sitting in there as well. So the only other thing I will have sitting in this section is my filter set. And I'm using this neat little set from Nisi, which is their Swift setup. It includes their mist filter. It also has a variable ND, which will cover all the way from one to nine stops when you stack the five on top. These filters are really high quality, producing really natural colors and no vignetting. Even when I stack them, since my widest setup here is 24 millimeter. I do also have a Peak Design tech pouch here, which when I'm traveling, so once I get to a location, I'll take this out and keep it at wherever I'm staying. But when I'm on the move, it sits nicely at the top here as well. Inside, you'll find everything I need, like cables, hard drives, extra memory cards, and even my mouse. The useful thing I like about this bag, when I remove that, so once I'm at a location and I'm just out for the day or whatever, this top section actually works really well to just sit your camera flat for really quick access from the top as well. So lastly, in this top section, we have another zip pocket. So this is anything I want quick access to. When I'm moving through the airport, I'll usually pop my passport there for quick access, chewing gum, whatever else, headphones, sunglasses, anything I want quick access to, I will pop in this little zip for convenient access. Of course, at the top here, right at the back, you'll find another zip, and this is where you'll find the dedicated laptop sleeve. We also have a lot of extra pockets in here, really useful for dividing things. I forgot to take a few things out here. I've got a nice lens cloth, and I've also got charging cables. This is well padded for your laptop, and definitely one of the best laptop sleeves I've used. All these pockets up here are really practical, which are great for things like hard drive or extra charging cables and it can fit up to a 16 inch laptop. The laptop sleeve is actually really clever as well because it is adjustable. So basically with this Velcro here, you can either raise it up if you've got a smaller laptop so it's not sitting right down deep at the bottom of the bag, or you can open it up more if you've got a larger 16 inch laptop. In this section, we also have a slightly larger pocket, just like a little pouch at the top here, which is really nice. And within this small pocket, I can actually fit my entire video setup. Let me show you. So it may surprise you, but I've decided to use the Pocket 3 as basically my main video camera now. So this is for all my vlog footage. Anytime I'm filming myself or when my main camera is in the frame or even POV, I'll be using the Pocket 3. I've only just got my hands on this thing, but it seems to be a real game changer on how I'm going to make these videos and it just complements my R5 nicely. When I want that juicier B-roll, I've still got my R5 for all my video needs, but this thing is just perfect so I don't have to carry a second camera. So it also fits nicely just in this little top section here, hardly taking up any space. For all my audio needs, I'm using the DJI Mic 2, so that's all in this little setup. Again, this complements everything really nicely because it's also got the transmitter, so I can use it with my R5 or the Pocket 3. Again, just reducing the need to carry anything like a big external mic and also a second camera. This really reduces my overall setup and again, fits neatly in the top of the bag here. I should probably mention the other camera which I always have on me, which of course is now the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Again, the best camera is the one you have on you and this thing is always on me and super versatile with its different lenses. Obviously not quite at the level of my R5, but damn, it's 
still gives great results and I'm keen to see what else I can create with this throughout the year. Now I do have a second more minimal daily setup which I'm using the six liter Peak Design Sling for and I actually have a totally different camera in that one. You might be able to pick what it is but I'll share a video on that one later on as well. So that's it, what's in my bag for 2024. I'm super excited to take this away traveling. Surprise, surprise, I'm headed back to Japan very soon. I'm actually doing the Tokyo Marathon, so super excited for that. Expect a lot of videos from Japan very soon. But for now, keep on creating and keep on going, my friends. I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.